Hey guys, welcome back to New Stuff TV, the untechnical tech channel, and your host for the best infotainment on YouTube. I'm your host, Antoine Scoot Scoot to Malou Richardson, because today we're gonna be checking out the Segway 9 by E45 electric kick scooter. Man, this is a badass scooter, man. Well, it's not the biggest, baddest scooter on the market. Actually, it's been on the market for a really long time. I contemplated, uh, I contemplated getting this thing for several months after a friend of mine, we both have the same type of dog. We both have two year old giant schnauzer puppies, okay? But they're about a hundred pounds each <laughs> and they're still kind of in their puppy phase. And the reason why he got his was so he could run his dog and let him run, you know, alongside him or whatever. And I was like, man, I always ride my bike with my dog, but it gets kind of annoying because, you know, my dog will, you know, he'll run fast and he'll stop, he'll run slow, he'll poop, he'll pee. And, you know, I'm just kind of like always starting, stopping and stuff on my bicycle. So I was like, man, if I had this scooter, uh, this thing gets up to 18 uh, miles per hour. So I could just go and it's not too much, you know, jar on my body starting and stopping and going slow and stuff like that. And it was just like, wow, just get a scooter. But the thing that deterred me was the price. Cause at the time around February, 2022, this thing was uh, about, I want to say $7.99, $8.99 on amazon.com. And I think on the Segway website. And I was thinking to myself, damn, you know, like $800 on a kick scooter just so you can walk your dog. So I started thinking, well, I don't live that far from my office here where I'm at right now. So maybe I could just, you know, commute back and forth. You know, it's about two, three miles back and forth. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's just get the scooter. You know, you, you've blown a lot of money elsewhere. You know what I'm saying? You might as well just get the scooter and be happy for the time being. So obviously I ended up purchasing the scooter and let me tell you, man, it's been one of my favorite, most fun purchases of 2022. If you're looking at it, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend you get it right now. But if you wanna watch the video, that's cool with me too. I'm just gonna tell you about my personal experience and a couple of things about this scooter. First of all, we'll talk about the physical weight, the weight capacity, and the portability, I guess you would say. Yes, it's a portable scooter because it scoots by itself, it is electric, and it gets up to 18 miles an hour. But let's say um, you wanted to go somewhere, you needed to uh, you know, stuff it in a trunk or something like that, or maybe carry it up some stairs. It weighs about 35 pounds or so. So, you know, it's not the heaviest scooter on the market, but it's not light for some people. It does fold up in a, you know, kind of a, clamshell kind of way and it is portable upstairs and you know through doorways and stuff like that i really don't um need to fold mine up because i live in a suburban area and i have a garage so i just roll it up in the garage and just kind of park it next to the bikes but should you need to fold it up put it in a car it will fit even in a small car now when i actually got this thing i was a little thick you know what i'm saying i was a little on the thick side and i weighed 253 pounds and i would still put my maybe 15 20 pound backpack on and it would carry me now the payload capacity tops out at 225 pounds but it carried me at 253 plus that backpack just fine. And I was able to maintain top speed at 18.6 miles an hour. Today, I'm standing in front of you a little bit lighter. I actually weigh 193 pounds now. And as far as like the way the scooter performs, I did notice that it picks up a little bit faster as far as that beginning torque. So, you know, that extra 60 pounds gone actually does help it, but I'm still able to maintain top speeds and stuff like that. My ride is a little bit less Mm, I guess, you know, shaky or scary because I'm not so heavy anymore. But like I said, it tops out at 225 pounds, but I was riding it at the beginning for several months at 253 plus a, maybe a 15, 20 pound backpack. Now, when we talk about my chubby butt hopping on this thing at 253 pounds, that means it's gotta be built right. And I'm a build quality guy. I believe you do get what you pay for almost every single time. But with Segway, that's never a question with me because I've never seen anything cheaply made come out of Segway. This thing has an aluminum frame and it is solid. There's like torque screws, not torque screws, but uh, Allen screws holding everything in place. And there, I mean, everything is solid. It's just solid aluminum. Uh, I do get a little bit of wobble in the stem and I think it's actually designed like that because when you go up curbs and stuff like that, it needs to give just a little bit. There is no suspension, so you will feel every like you know the sidewalk you know how it's sectioned off in the sections you will feel every one of those ka -dum, ka -dum, ka -dum. and if you run over little bumpy you know spots in the road or whatever you're going to feel all that so if you're looking for a suspension and a nice smooth ride you're not getting it here because there is no suspension but as far as build materials top notch as far as build quality it's put together really really well 
Now, being that it's a commuter scooter, you gotta have some type of weather resistance because every day is not a sunny day. It's got an IPX4 rating. That means it's gonna be splash proof. So don't be submerging this thing and trying to ride underwater to your knees or nothing like that. But in case it rains, you will get to and from A and B with no problems, even in heavy rain, because it is splash proof. Now, I did mention going down bumpy and rough streets. Now, while you're doing that, you might encounter something like a nail, a screw, some kind of metal shard or some glass. So don't worry about, you know, getting punctured and, and getting a flat. These things don't go flat. They're, they're not run flats. They're just like these nine inch tires that just pretty much all rubber. So they're puncture resistant. So I haven't gotten any, you know, nails or anything in my tires that I've seen or heard, but um, it's just going to bounce right out of there. Or you can just pull it out because it is puncture proof or puncture resistant, I should say. Now that actually brings me to the ride and ride quality. Being that it is a lightweight scooter at 35 pounds, I still consider that lightweight. Uh, and it is a small frame scooter, meaning it's just, you know, it's just a pole and then a deck, just a platform, right? With two wheels attached to it. It's a very simplistic looking scooter. So it is lightweight. So being that it's so lightweight, the, the amount of rod quality you get, it still feels very stable, even at the top speed of 18 miles an hour. I didn't feel like I was gonna wobble apart or fall off of this thing at any point. And that takes me to braking because the brakes actually, it's a thumb brake up here, right? You got a thumb throttle and a thumb brake. I'll talk about the brake first. On the thumb brake, it actually controls the front wheel. So it slows that down. It's not like a skirt, it's, you know, it doesn't you know, skid out or anything, but it does slow it down nice and quickly to where you don't uh, uh, fly forward or flip forward. When you're going at that top speed, I like to dip down a little bit just in case, bro. If anybody's ever been on a nice, you know, BMX or a mountain bike, you hit that brake, that front brake real hard. You know what I'm talking about. You gotta kind of scoot back or, you know, dip down a little bit so you don't flip. I still do that as a precaution. <laughs> that way I don't flip, but it doesn't jerk you forward. Forward. It's it's a nice smooth you know slide uh, into a complete stop. But in case you do need a little bit more stopping power, it does have a rear fender brake that you can physically step on with your foot and get that thing to stop a little bit faster. Now I'm all good with the thumb brake process because it's just a little lever that you just push down and it starts the brake process. But as far as the thumb throttle, it's, it's kind of a love hate affair with me because while you're throttling up, I like pushing that lever down. It's just and it sounds very electric. It goes. I love that sound, okay? But you just push it down and you just go, right? But because it's a thumb throttle, you have to kind of, I don't know, lock your thumb tip on the stagnant part of the, uh, the, the handlebar and just kind of rock your thumb down to get low speeds because if you have it, there's three different uh, speed modes we'll, which we'll get into, which is eco, and then you have normal, then you have sport. I keep mine in sport because I need that extra torque and I want the top speed all the time. But you know, to get, anywhere in between zero and 18 miles an hour, you kind of just have to rock your thumb, place your fingertip or your thumb tip on the, on the stagnant part of the uh, handlebar, and then just kind of rock your thumb up or down and just kind of lock it there to maintain that speed. So it is really hard to maintain specific speeds while you're going. Cruise control is, you set it by maintaining the same speed for like five seconds, and then you'll hear a beep, and then you can just be in cruise control. And the only way you can stop it is A, hit that throttle again, just any tap on the throttle or the brake and the cruise control is disengaged, which is great. It's a great safety feature. Now, as we segue into speed and power, see what I did there? <laughs> but as we get into that, hey man, the speed and power is there for you, provided you're not trying to race cars and stuff. 18.6 miles an hour is the top speed. And for me, that has been more than enough to just kind of breeze through my neighborhoods and stuff and get to where I need to go. Now, in case you live in a hilly area such as Austin, San Antonio, or uh, maybe San Diego or something like that, place with a lot of hills, this thing will climb a 20% grade, but I'm pretty sure you have to engage it into sport mode to do that. That way you get that full torque, full throttle, and then you can get up that hill. It's not gonna take you up that hill at 18.6 miles an hour, but you will climb the hill. And we, I, I live in Houston, Texas. We don't have a lot of hills here, but there are some dips in our bayou. And I would say, uh, I don't know what degree or what percentage percentage of an incline that is, but it has never stopped or stalled out going up one of those hills. And in my opinion, they're pretty steep. I definitely don't want to run up those hills. That's for dang sure. Okay, I had to write this down for you guys. It has a 28 mile range, which has been great for me because I don't commute that far. Like I said, I'm about two to three miles one way. So that's six miles, you know, round trip and I'm doing just fine. But this thing has a 28 mile range uh, on a single charge. 
and it doesn't take that long to charge up. I'm saying about maybe, maybe about eight hours to charge up to full. I really haven't gauged that so far. You know, it's just not something I've been worried about personally. I'll just wait till the battery bar gets down to maybe the one little bar or it's blinking. I'll take it home, kind of charge it overnight. I do feel safe charging it overnight because it actually stops charging. And it's a Segway, man. So they've done a good job with maintaining their batteries. But in those 28 miles, man, I don't know if you're gonna get a whole 28 mile range if you're riding this bad boy on sport mode the whole time. So let's just take that with a grain of salt. But you do have two other modes. You got eco mode, which will get you a top speed of 9.3 miles an hour. Normal, which will get you a top speed of 15.5 miles an hour. And of course, sport, which tops out at 18.6. You do get some extra bells and whistles, man. Once you turn this thing on, it's already on right now. You see, I got an LED headlight right here. I don't know how many lumens that is, but in the dark, it does light up the night, man. This thing is actually extra bright. It's like holding one of those torch flashlights out in front of you. Then it actually does come with a tail light, which you can program to flash or be stagnant or get bright and be stagnant when you actually hit on the on the brake. So I have mine programmed to flash that way if I'm in the dark and there's some cars coming down the street or something like that they'll just see a flashing light. It also has an underglow under the deck which is LED it's a RGB LED so you can actually program that to be whatever you want. Now one thing that kind of annoys me is the fact that the handlebars are not built to have anything attached to them by way of accessories. I don't understand why Segway does this they definitely need to fix this crap but you can get some attachments on there. I managed to get a phone holder and a Bluetooth speaker on there, uh, but it's not really designed for that, okay? So if, you, if you're having trouble, you might wanna have to look for something with some, you know, some rubber grommets or something that has a, a bigger circumference that way you can lock around this handlebar, which is actually a weird taper. I just don't understand why they've done this. I guess it's a safety thing and they don't really want you to do that. I have no idea, but I guess to make up for it, they give us app connectivity. All you gotta do is turn on your Bluetooth, turn on the uh, scooter there, and then you can get this thing set up and they give you a lot of data here. I got 15 miles of range left with 55% battery, which is very consistent with the battery range, that, uh, the top range that they promote, give or take how heavy you are on the throttle. So that actually adds up and makes sense to me. You can actually lock your scooter. Now it's not a full lock, like the, the wheels are not gonna be like locked stagnant. They do roll a little bit. There's actually a lot of resistance so you can't just get on it and take off. But once again, it is only a 35 pound scooter. So somebody could easily pick this thing up, put it in the trunk of their car, and now you ain't got no scooter. But you can track it because it's app connected. Um, but check this out, man. I didn't realize I was rolling like this. I got 377 miles on this thing, man. That's a lot of miles for me to ride and a lot of footsteps from a puppy. <laughs> but you can see here, you can actually record your rides if you want to. And then you got cruise control. You can actually toggle that on or off because I cannot, I can actually understand there will be some instances where you want to hold down on that throttle and not engage uh, cruise control. So you can actually toggle that on and off here, that feature. Then you have regenerative uh, power recovery. Oh, it says, please connect Bluetooth. Oh, I'm gonna connect. Oh, I turned it off. Okay, there we go. Let's turn it on and we are connected. So we got regenerative power recovery. I got mine on strong. You got uh, weak, medium, and strong, and I'm gonna keep mine on strong. Then you've got your lighting effects, which you can go into. Like I said, you got your rear light, you can have it always on, or the braking light uh, highlight, so it just gets brighter as you step on it, or you can have it flash when you're braking, which is what I actually prefer. That way it's just a little bit more eye-catching. I do have my underglow set, and you've got uh, looks like 12 modes that you can do for the underglow, which is RGB. You can set it to one color breathing or multicolor breathing, whatever you want to do, but you do have all of those. Like I said before, man, I got this thing somewhere around February, 2022. It's now December, 2022. And this is by far my most favorite, most fun purchase of the year. That's why I wanted to show it to you guys. But for those taking a look at this thing to actually purchase, I don't know why you're going to purchase it, but I will say it's a great first scooter for someone who doesn't know how to ride because eco mode actually goes very slow. It's only nine miles an hour, right? And it doesn't take off with a lot of torque. So you can really learn how to ride a scooter uh, on this thing. And then you got plenty of room to grow once you start bumping it up to, um, a normal or normal mode and sport mode and then you have plenty okay so like i said you know going 18 miles an hour top speed even at the at the weight of 253 pounds plus a backpack 
I was able to achieve that. So it's a great commuter scooter as well for people who just going back and forth to work or running to the store, whatever you're doing on your scooter, you know what I'm saying? But as you grow and get used to this thing, you might find yourself wanting maybe a little bit more speed or the thing that I want is a suspension because like I said, you do feel every single thing in the road as you're going because it doesn't have a suspension and these tires are not necessarily soft. So I don't know, maybe the next version of this thing could have maybe a low end suspension because you don't really get a suspension on Segway scooters until you get up into the pricey, pricey range, which is where I'm going to next, man. I love this scooter. <laughs> Actually, this is gonna be a hand-me-down to my wife. You know, she's terrified of, you know, speed and stuff. But she does want to scoot around with me when we go out at night and walk the dog or, you know, just have some fun. So I'm going to give this one to her. And I have recently purchased the Segway GT1 Super Scooter. So that video is coming up next in the near couple of weeks to months. It actually is going to be delivered tomorrow. I'm so freaking excited. Either way, I'm no expert on this kind of stuff. But what I do know is the Segway 9x E45 has seriously been my favorite, most fun and exciting purchase of 2022. I actually bought it for one reason, ended up using it for multiple reasons and I love it. As a matter of fact, I've become a scooterer at this point. I bought this thing to walk my dog with and now here I am purchasing the next, you know, the next big thing. It's not the next big thing. It is the biggest thing, which is the Segway GT1. I cannot wait. I, I got to stop talking about that thing because it's about the E45. Either way, I'm getting out of here, man. Y'all keep being good to each other and I'll see you when I see you.